Although pharmacies that specialize in compounding and therefore do a lot of weighing often invest in sensitive electronic balances, most pharmacies continue to use a torsion balance, such as the one pictured in this slide, for weighing solid materials in daily pharmacy practice. For this reason, it is imperative that each student of pharmacy be well-versed on the use of this piece of equipment. This tutorial is designed to introduce you to the various components of the balance as well as the technique used for weighing. The first component of the balance to introduce is the lid. The lid spans the entire length of the balance and has clear glass across the front and top allowing you to visualize the product, the scale, and the indicator during the weighing process. The lid is hinged on the back of the balance for easy opening and closing. To prevent inaccuracy and errors that could arise due to oscillations in the air during the weighing process, it is imperative that the lid always be closed during the weighing process. The weighing pans, located on the top surface of the balance, beneath the lid, are the part of the balance where your products as well as the offsetting weights are placed. These pans are made of stainless steel and are removable. It is imperative that these pans be absolutely clean and centered on the weighing arms prior to weighing any products. Products must never be weighed directly on the pans. Always use either a plastic weighing boat or weighing paper when weighing your products. This keeps the pans clean and prevents the possibility of any chemical reaction from occurring between the product and the pan itself. The locking arm, located on the front of the balance, below the dial, near the bottom, locks and releases the pans during weighing. The locking arm is turned manually in a clockwise direction to lock the pans and in a counterclockwise direction to release the pans. It is important to remember that this clockwise, counterclockwise manipulation of the locking arm is an all or nothing event. In other words, when the locking arm is turned clockwise to lock the pans in place, it, be, it must be turned all the way to the right. Similarly, when the locking arm is turned counterclockwise to release the pans for weighing, it must be turned all the way to the left. There is no happy medium when rotating the locking arms. Failure to rotate the arms completely may result in weighing errors. The two leveling screws are located on the front, underneath side of the balance at both ends. These screws allow you to ensure that your balance is level prior to weighing, which is a necessity for accuracy. By turning a leveling screw clockwise, you will raise that side of the balance. And by turning the leveling screw counterclockwise, you will lower that side of the balance. An easy way to remember this is to commit to memory the phrase, turn right to raise and left to lower. The scale and indicator can be visualized through a window located on the top surface of the balance in the center. The scale contains long vertical markings in the center, flanked on either side by smaller markings, which reflects the balance's sensitivity. The scale and its markings remain stationary at all times. The indicator, otherwise known as the pointer, is bright red in color and can shift to the right or left during the weighing process. During weighing, sustained alignment of the pointer with the long central vertical marking on the scale indicates that the weight in each pan is equivalent. The weight dial is located on the front of the balance. Rotating the dial clockwise allows you to add weight to the balance in increments up to one gram by simply dialing in the desired weight. By design, when the dial is used to add weight to the balance, the balance adds that weight to the pan on the right side. Therefore, when weighing, you must always remember to place your weights on the right-hand pan and the product you are weighing on the left-hand pan. Should you forget which pan the weights go on, you can remind yourself by simply releasing the locking arm, dialing in some weight, and observing which pan drops. It will always be the pan on the right side of the balance, indicating to you 
that when using the dial, the balance adds weight to the right hand pan. Your weight set contains various metric weights ranging from 10 milligrams all the way up to 50 grams, plus a pair of tongs used for handling the weights. Weights such as these will be added to the right hand pan of the balance during weighing when a weight of product in excess of 1 gram is desired. For any desired weight less than 1 gram, the weight dial will be used. The use of tongs when handling the weights is extremely important in order not to contaminate the weights and thereby preserve their accuracy. Apothecary weights expressed in grains are also available in most weight sets but are rarely used. The first step toward weighing is ensuring that your balance is level. The procedure for leveling the balance and then weighing will be presented in stepwise fashion in the slides that follow. First, when leveling the balance, you must ensure that the pans are absolutely clean and centered on the weighing arms. Then make sure that the weight dial is zeroed and the lid is closed. Next, release the pans by rotating the locking arm all the way counterclockwise. With the pans released, observe the pointer for movement. Should the pointer remain aligned with the long vertical marking in the center of the scale, the balance is level and ready for weighing. However, should the pointer move in either direction, leveling is required. In this image, the pointer has moved all the way to the right of the scale, indicating that leveling action must be taken to return the pointer back in alignment with the long vertical marking in the center of the scale. This can be accomplished by rotating the leveling screw on the right side of the balance clockwise to raise the right side of the balance, or by rotating the leveling screw on the left side of the balance counterclockwise to lower the left side of the balance, or by using a combination of both. In this example, we simply choose to raise the right side of the balance by rotating the right leveling screw slowly in a clockwise direction. While slowly rotating the leveling screw, carefully observe the movement of the pointer over the scale. Once the pointer aligns with the long vertical marking in the center of the scale and remains stationary, the balance is level. Once level, Lock the pans into place by rotating the locking arm all the way to the right and then proceed with weighing. The first step in weighing is to place either weighing boats as pictured in this image or weighing paper onto each pan. Then close the lid. Release the locking arm and double check to make sure that the balance is still level. As a side note, Oftentimes you will encounter small weight variations among weighing boats, which will require small adjustments of the leveling screws to return the balance back into a level state after the weighing boats have been placed on the pans. Once you have ensured that the balance is still level, lock the pans into place by rotating the locking arm clockwise. The next step is to add the desired weight from the weight set to the right hand pan. In this illustration, the desired weight of product we wish to attain is 1.5 grams. Therefore, using the tongs, we will take the 1 gram weight from the weight set and place it into the weighing boat centered on the right hand pan. Next, dial in the remainder of the desired weight, 0.5 grams in this case, using the weight dial. Once this is completed, the desired weight of 1.5 grams now resides on the right hand pan. Now add some of the product you wish to weigh on the boat on the left hand pan and close the lid. Release the locking arm by rotating it all the way counterclockwise. Now observe the pointer for movement. Should it move to the right of center, this indicates that the weight on the right hand pan still outweighs the product in the left hand pan and that more product needs to be added. Should this be observed, lock the pans into place, raise the lid, add some more of the product, then weigh again as previously outlined. 
Should the pointer move to the left of center, the product placed in the left hand pan now outweighs the desired weight on the right hand pan, indicating that some of the product added needs to be removed. Should this be observed, again, lock the pans into place, raise the lid, remove a portion of the product, then weigh again as previously outlined. Continue this process of adding or removing product from the left hand pan and reweighing until the pointer aligns and remains in alignment with the long vertical marking in the center of the scale, indicating that the desired weight of product has been attained.